To make C++ projects in Unreal, the first thing you'll need is the Visual Studio, IDE, and Microsoft compiler. You can get that for free by downloading the Visual Studio Community Edition by clicking this button. Once that is downloaded, you'll have a Visual Studio installer, and you can run that. Once the Visual Studio installer is done and ready, you can select what you would like to install. I'm going to select everything that has to do with C++ or C Sharp, so the .NET Framework development with C++, Windows Platform Development, Mobile Development with C++, Game Development with C++, Medix Embedded Development with C++, and you don't have to install all of them, but I'm just doing that to cover all the ground. So you click Install, and it'll download. This will take some time. Once it's done installing, you should be able to make a test project. Unreal does a lot of customization in C++, and the default Visual Studio IntelliSense can struggle with it. One plugin that I highly recommend if using Visual Studio is the Visual Assist plugin by Whole Tomato. You can download a free trial for 30 days. Once you pay for it, you get updates for a year, but after that you have a perpetual fallback license that does not get updated. This lets you do things like refactor, go to definition, find symbols, and find references. Pretty much all the normal software engineering things you need to do. Visual Assist will make Visual Studio feel like an IDE again. Another plugin that I use is Intrian. Whereas Visual Assist is a smart IDE tool, Intrian is really just a text search that is indexed, but it's lightning fast. And in large projects where even Visual Assist lives down, Intrian can do text searches with autocomplete and find your code instantly. You will also need the Epic Games Launcher. The Epic Games Launcher lets you easily download the engine and symbols for debugging. In addition to Visual Studio, there's a new IDE called Writer for Unreal. This gives you specific IntelliSense for Unreal and features built just for Unreal. And it seems to be pretty good, so I recommend this if you're interested in buying another piece of software. You don't need to buy Visual Assist or Intrian if buying this because those types of features are included in this IDE. I already have the version of the engine I'll be using installed, but to show you how to install it, I'll install a preview version. So you click the plus, select your engine version, let's say 5.1 preview 2, install. Once it's finished downloading, we should also download the engine's debug symbols. This will make debugging in C++ a lot easier as you'll be able to step through engine code. So click Options and find Editor Symbols for Debugging. Apply. Once that is done, there is one more add-on to install that comes with Unreal. Navigate to your Unreal Engine 5 install directory. Under Engine, Extras, there will be a folder called Unreal VS. This is a plugin for Visual Studio created by Epic. Go to your Visual Studio version and run this extension installer. This extension allows you to easily change the command line from Visual Studio and do custom stuff like single file compiles for Unreal, among other things. Now we will create a new C++ project. The first time booting the engine may take a little bit longer than normal. With the engine booted, Let's go to Games to create a new project. This may look slightly different depending on the engine version you download. Personally, I like to start from a blank slate, so I'll choose the blank template project. But if this is your first time ever working in Unreal, it's probably advisable to start with a template like the first person or third person template so that you have some content to work with. So selecting your project template, select C++, give your project a name, choose a file location, After giving your project a location and a name, click Create. After a moment, the engine will open up. It also opened Visual Studio for me. This is Intrin asking where to create a source index for fast searching. I'll create an index for this real quickly. The engine may have populated a single CPP file for you. So in the Solution Explorer, I can find that file, which was the game mode base. We'll talk more about creating files in later videos. For now, we should test that we can 
build the game. If you install the Unreal VS plugin, you will have this toolbar somewhere in your Visual Studio. This lets you specify command lines. So I'm going to remove the skip compile command line. And I'll set it to our project name, which will be some game name. Depending on your project, I just named it UECPP Tutorials. You may also want to change your configuration type to Debug Game Editor. We'll talk more about these in a later video. And with that, you can start the local Windows Debugger, which should kick off a build. Personally, I like to leave that menu up that asks you to build so that in times where you don't want to build your project, you can say no and watch with the old build. While that builds, if you plan on using Perforce as your version control, a lot of people like the Nifty Perforce plugin to make Perforce integration with Visual Studio better. But the maintainer took a job where they do not let them work on open source code anymore. But I believe you can still find this as forks on GitHub for the newer versions of Visual Studio. However, I do not use this. Instead, I have created custom tools for all my main Perforce tasks, adding files, editing files, time-lapsing, and revision graph. Those tools are created under external tools, and they look like this. Note that in newer versions of Perforce, this has changed to be a .pad file instead of a .exe. After defining your external tools, you can add them to a toolbar like this. But first, you have to make a new toolbar. So right click, go to customize, new, give your toolbar a name, close, find your new toolbar, click, add or remove buttons, customize, add new command, tools, find external commands, close, and so P4 add. For me, this looked like this, close. One other thing you can do to make Visual Studio better is to disable the default IntelliSense. If you're using something like Visual Assist or ReSharper, you might not need the IntelliSense. So the way you do that is you go to Tools, Options, Text Editor, C++, Advanced, and under IntelliSense, there is Disable IntelliSense, set that to true, and Disable Squiggles, and there, there may be other settings in here that you should disable. That should disable IntelliSense, so you won't see squiggles anymore, but operations will be a lot faster. And in Visual Assist, if you go to Extensions, Visual Assist, Visual Assist Options, you can change the source of the C++ content from default IntelliSense over to Visual Assist. If you're curious about my color scheme, here's the colors. You can also apply these colors to other menus with enabling these checkboxes. There are a few ways to add a new class to the engine. One quick and easy way, if you have the editor running, is to right-click New C++ Class. This will generate the boilerplate for you. We can pick a parent class to start off with. We'll pick character, or we can go into all classes and choose more specific classes. Click next. Name your character. Create class. This will generate the header and CPP files for you. It will also regenerate the project files. After creating class, let's close the editor and recompile. Visual Studio will ask you to reload all. That is because we've regenerated the Visual Studio project files from creating a new class. If we check the solution in Explorer, we can see our new class. Note, you can just create your own files and they will be compiled as part of the project. But if you do that, you need to update your Visual Studio solution files, otherwise your IntelliSense may not work correctly. The way to do that is to go to your project's root directory, right-click on the new project, and to generate Visual Studio project files. Generating your project files normally does not take too long. There's also an option to do this in Unreal VS here. You will soon notice that Visual Studio has an issue with the macros that Unreal uses. To remedy this, go to Tools, Options, search for tabs, find C++ tabs, and change it from Smart to Block. Hit OK. This will allow you to make new properties without it auto-formatting against you. Now we can compile and launch the game again with our new class. Now that we've compiled the engine, our class is exposed to the editor. Here is my test character. We can just drop it into the level to test it out. Because we built it from Visual Studio and our debugging, we can drop breakpoints into our source code. And because we downloaded the editor debug symbols, we can even go to base engine classes and drop breakpoints. 
note that I navigated here using the visual assist. Alt Shift O to find file, and Alt M to find method. Instead of Alt G on Super, Alt Shift G allows me to see the parent. Now that we've set breakpoints, we can play after throwing our character in the level, and we should hit the breakpoints. So here we've hit the parent class, actors, begin play. I'm going to remove the breakpoint and resume execution. Now we've hit our classes function, and we can inspect our classes variables. So that should be enough to get you started developing C++ and Unreal. I will create further videos that better explain the classes, properties, and in general the gameplay framework that the Unreal Engine provides.